Welcome back to Ways. Today on the show, we will be looking at coping with the loss of a close friend or family member. Um, it may be one of the hardest challenges that many of us face without even talking about it. When we lose a spouse, sibling, or parent, or um, our grief can be particularly intense. Our first guest that's, um, <laughs> is a counselor, is a life coach, and we'll be talking to him on how we can help our loved ones that are dealing with grief. So please help me welcome Excel Adele. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so Excel much. Excel Adele Samuel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so there. much for coming. Thank you for the opportunity. Ah, you know what? Um, when we were talking about this um, topic about death, people don't like, they always say when they hear death, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. Well, I know that you know it's something that's inevitable. Whether we are ready to accept that fact is what I don't know. But why do you think it is like that? Why do you think people shy away from that, that I, topic? I, I think it's in human behavior not to want to lose anything. Hmm. And if you could just remember when last you displayed your phone, what comes to your mind? How am I going to pay for another one? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to even lose my phone. At that point, there's confusion, there's mm -hmm. instability, mm -hmm. there is negative thoughts, there is you, 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 anxiety just comes in within that seconds. Mm. And when you get the phone, you just say, ah, oh, thank God. Mm. You get it. Mm. Then you now transport that to imagine the closest person in your life that you have assumed the future with. You have planned the future with. Suddenly, boom, you can't find them again. I saw a painful picture on the social media, I think it was yesterday. A lady was lying down at the burial place of her lost husband who died in war with the baby. Oh dear. And I just shed tears. She lied there, right there. African? No, no, white. White. Now, let me now say this in my practice. Oh, she, I've seen. Baby. she was with the baby. She was with the baby. Yeah. Just lying there. The picture there. I have discovered this in my path. There's what I call the, it's like a life chart for you to check when was your happiness and lowest time. So it's a graph that says if you are zero to 45, for example. And what I see consistent is when it gets to the point of people losing their loved one, they go as, because it's about happiness level zero to 100, mm -hmm. it goes down zero. Now, so just in the graph, I can just say, tell me what happened here. They will say, when I lost my loved one. And the other one that come along is when probably my parents had a breakup. For them also, it That's is a loss. loss. Now that, if I may step in there, children lose people they love in different ways, probably through a divorce or through actually a demise of yes. a parent. Yes. Is there something in place for children to be, um, um, how do I put it now, to be properly cared for during this per, uh, period that they are grieving the loss of a parent the or a love. Oh, yes. Okay. They have different ways now, they grieve. Now, sadly, yes. you are in nowhere Africans. Exactly. The people we take for granted more when somebody dies are, are the, the children. children. Exactly. So then you see probably a guy died in an accident 45 or the grandmother died at 80 and people walking. They pass the children. Yeah, because I remember they say, when my grandma Sorry, ma. Died. Sorry, ma. Sorry, ma. And they take that child for granted. The child become 45, for example. You are having some session with him, and the child takes you back to when he lost someone. And when they lose somebody, it means that the person I believe in, who I trusted, just lost. They begin to have a problem with trust. And when it happened one, two times, they don't just trust anybody. So they will say, for example, you're in a relationship. I don't know why even you can work out. They are saying, ah, what happened? Have you been married? No. I just feel that you can, you can leave at any time. Any time. Because that is somebody leaving them suddenly. Mm. So, they are so it is pathetic. Mm. Yes, it's, it's a pathetic in environment that we take children for granted so much. I remember I, I had a very fantastic relationship with my grandmother that when we talk, we would, in a way, even in a way, insult ourselves and we we'll laugh about it. Mm. No, you know, you know, grandma, you know, look at you, where you're from, and all that. I remember her dying. I had to go and play her visit because I knew she was leaving. And that for me was closure. I imagine I didn't do that that day because as I got there talking to her, she can't even remember who I am again. Mm. But for me, 
I went there to go and say bye bye to her. Were you young or at No, I was, I was an adult. Mm. So but I that, knew so that was the closure I need to do. So, so but unfortunately, and, 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 and this is a forum mm. that we need to sit the children down and ask them, how did you feel? Sometimes they can't actually Thank voice you it very out. Much for bringing that because because we don't even know how to communicate because we ourselves don't grieve mm. as a way, and because there's also a difference between grieving and mourning. What's the difference? Okay, good. Grieving is the fact that things have happened to you and everybody grieves, but not everybody more. So if you remember some of our culture, when somebody died, they will say, let Wait, all the people and go and stay. They are mourning together. And that mourning is a form of therapy to say we are there with you. You get it now? So we don't do all that. So I think it's a right time to let us sit with children. It also shows that in our part this of the world, we important. don't regard the sensitivity of a child. And that child becomes an adult. So when you see a man who can show emotion, it's because his emotion died at the age of five. Oh, they can feel from as little as five. As oh, little from one, as, well, if you suddenly do, take do you, a breast from your child, and not communicating and do symptomatically, you cannot just just so lose just a child. It just has like a psychological effect on for them, life. which is... And it's a repair that, you know, you can see when somebody physically have an injury, you can kill that, but psychologically issue. It is deeper and you can see But it. tell us, as a psychologist, or you help, because um, your profile says you help to psychoanalyze <laughs> people, and you've been doing this for a while. What is the best? Because I hear people all the time that when somebody just loses someone, they just feel like it does the best time to come and start to talk about it and all of those things. What is your best approach when, because now, for instance, what we talked about, the woman now that is, you know, I'm sure she's in a state of pain right now. What exactly is the best thing to do when somebody dies? Because even we have a question, you know, on WhatsApp, somebody sent, Somebody sent um, a question and she was saying that she lost her cousin. I think I'll, I'll pull it out, but what's the best approach to, Okay, you know? I, I will say the best approach and I will say the approach we use, which is not the best, so even worse, sometimes that creates more problem. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that you want to hear at that point is to say, God knows about it. Mm -mm. God knows best. Which we do, which God knows best. But we does say, it not work? I think it works though. Not at that point. Okay. You see, I know God knows, but that's what I want. I, I'll give you a, a scenario. Uh, this group of guys went to um, uh, a, a friend's place, and they say, ah, sorry, your mom died, sorry, your mom died, and he said, ah, you know, this thing feels so bad. The other one says that, I know how you feel. Then the guy looked at him, shut up your mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Have you lost your mother before? Exactly. Even so if you know you've what lost your mother before, exactly. you didn't lose her right now. Yes, so yes. I, do you know what it means? So. We should stop saying to people, I know what it means. No, then you don't know. That's another step. That's another you, you type. Get it now. Or so get the hold of yourself. Have, we have another sect again that do this. They once once they come in, maybe they they, 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 they come into the house of the bereaved. Before you say Jack, they hit themselves on the floor. Oh, they cry more than me. They cry more, more than, than the bereaved. About to say. Actually, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, you know, Africa is full of drama. Just let's leave drama. So, yeah, okay, you were saying, but what, the, the simplest way what to do is stay by the person. Not making a comment is actually you are with me. Actually, you get it now. And again, try to, if the person in one world love touch, you can hold hands and not say a word. And it always goes a long way. It you goes know, a long way. Sure now, people who are sick, remember those who checked on them when they were in the sick bed. Some people. And those who have been away, were close to there, came back and said, I remember this person was by me. I'm yeah. saying this from my own. You know, point let, let me read the question for, uh, from, from someone. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It says, Hi, I lost a cousin who um, I was very close to but felt bad. He never told me how sick he was. Um, I felt bad because he never told me how sick he was. I was busy telling him to run a business with me. I never knew he was dying. It felt hard forgiving me. That's the person saying it felt hard forgiving myself. How do we, how do you forgive yourself for not being there? Okay, let, yeah. me, say, let me say this. The worst thing to do to yourself is not to forgive. However, the, wor the hardest thing also to do is to forgive yourself. Wow. As a matter of fact, tonight I'm, I'm running a session on personal forgiveness, personal reconciliation. What you do. No, there was something I saw on your profile yes. which says forgiveness is giving yourself a priceless gift of inner peace. That is it. So, so as much as it's hard, you have to come to that junction. Now, this is the hardest thing. You may not be able also to walk that 
junction yourself or that exactly. road yourself. You may need people to lead you, Help but you. it's necessarily. Because if you have not done that, you can also, like they say, you can't give what you don't have, but you have to come to that realization. If blaming yourself, it is necessary. Do all the blaming, but you have to leave the blaming. But it gets to a point that you don't want to even interact with anybody. You don't want to blame anybody. No, 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 no. You just it, 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 don't it, want to interact you see, with anybody. Sometimes nothing. we should accept people for their personality. Okay. And the way we go about it are different. Mm -hmm. Some for life may need to carry the picture. It becomes an inspiration to them. Let it be so. For as long as they want uh, to. Let, let, let it be so. What we do wrong in this part of the world is that we have a straight jacketed Approach pattern that things. people should go about it. No. And I will give you, I, I was running a, a, a therapy of a recent, something close to what happened to this person, losing two siblings a day. And she said to herself, I said, will you want to say goodbye? She said, no, I don't want to say goodbye. I want them to be part of my life because I feel that there are spirits around me. That's the way she wants to go about the grieving. But she's beginning to look at life differently. Of course, he, he, he said to me, rather, he said, what I, the way I have also programmed my mind is to believe that they are somewhere, and I will see them one day. But I've been come to realization that, no, they are not really existing there. So you were telling us that it is OK to be in that state. Because, Miriam, you said you had, you know, you had an experience with your grandfather. You want mm -hmm. to share that with us? Yeah, and I like the fact that he brought up the fact that people don't regard kids because I was like 15 I think or younger when he died and everybody was telling my grandma sorry my um, auntie sorry my mom sorry and I'm just there and I'm like wait but I just lost my dad because he was like my dad and nobody even said a thing to you you know anything to me so I'm like but I I was having a conversation with them before you came that I grieved, I cried, I was so sad, but I got over it. But now I am thinking that maybe the reason why I got over it really quick was because I was young at that age. Because Issy also lost like a loved, and then she I've still lost loved the loved ones mm. all along. You know, but I feel like but if it was climax. now that I lost my grandpa, it would hit me more than it hit me then. She's so asking so yeah, age. Yeah, yeah does age? Age totally affect. However. The personality of the child and how the loss happen also matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay? For this woman, this is a tragic thing. One of the things that's going to accept blame is going to come in okay. to this woman. What should I have done? Because that's they know guilty. you. For you, Being guilty. there's nothing you could have done. As See, a child. I feel, so, so let me tell you this interesting story. You know. When we got home, like we were visiting him a day before. So when we got home the next day, we were supposed to pray like 5 a.m. because I'm Muslim, I would pray 5 times. So I was too tired and then I just went to sleep. So I woke up to hear that he had died. So I'm like, wait, was it because I didn't pray? What if I had prayed? You know, so I was at that self-guilt point for a while. Like the morning prayer could have saved him, but some way I just got over it. Yeah. So what you do, like you say in psychoanalysis, to ask the quest question is that are there some people who were praying and their loved ones to die? Mm. Then you say yes. Do you remember this particular person who was praying and he died? Or some, some people even in the place of prayer, they died right there. Yes, that's very true. Like, oh, that's actually true. Okay. That's so, not my case. Because we have to run off. Can you just tell us now, so in summary, when we lose a loved one, you know, so are you encouraging us to get help? Or you think um, it would be okay for us to just, you know, probably grief? you know, for as long as we want to, because I heard you say that, you know, or, you know, people just say snap out of it, it's gone, it's this, and people just <laughs> expect you to be okay. So how... Okay, let, let us accept this reality. It will never be gone, regardless okay. of the therapy. I told you. Okay. We have to accept that reality. It's a big loss. If someone you dearly love or you don't love the person, and you know, and all that. Even seeing somebody in an accident, sometimes you don't leave Actually. that picture and all that. So we have to accept the reality. But we have to also realize the reality that they will never come back as a way. So, yeah. but what do we do with it? Now, what I do advise in therapy sometimes, you can make a story, a positive story after that situation. Okay? Now, when you now become someone to say, oh, do you know what? What was the lovely time we spent together? How was it? Mm. You get it now. Mm. Sometimes you may need to write a letter to the person. Wow. I remember him. But reminiscing these good times does it not just make you feel sadder and miss them more? No. No, 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 no. no. Over time, like she's saying, based on her experience, no. not on the truth. There is a time that you feel the pain. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Even if you have a wound, at the point the wound will pain you no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even but if the scar is there, yeah, there. Yeah, the scar is there. You get it now. Mm -hmm. So you will need to do that. Sometimes you may need to write a letter and say bye bye. Sometimes you may need to have a conversation with a person if that yeah. necessary, depending on how and all that. But I think in this part of the world, we need to also now embrace professional help as well, which we don't really need to do, 
So somebody died in the office and work just won as usual in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You get it now. Somebody lost the pregnancy. said, you know, I think it did on cool place. Forgetting the what has happened place. to that child. Yeah. The workplace. <laughs> that's another story. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's um, the much we can take for now. But the truth is that this, this topic cannot be over exhausted. Totally correct. So totally we would correct. really love to have you back because workplace is another drama. It doesn't encourage other people that are alive. Because if you can just move on like that, Somebody just died. Work has to go on. Well, I, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, you will, but ask. we have to ask, ask our other guest. Ask him. Ask him. <laughs> After the break, <laughs> we have to go on a break. Please um, stay with us. Today, then we will join us after this break.